why don't we why don't we why don't we put a bow on this on this podcast talking a little bit about politics you guys can know where i stand with with certain things and you can get mad at me because how i'm going to probably what i'm going to share it's like both sides will be mad at me pretty much um like for the i still have to be fully convinced that it matters and it's not predetermined or just a, a veneer a puppet show um you know putting straw men for us to get mad at while powers that be continue to hold power and continue to push um world dynamics however they wish just with this um straw man of a president straw person so i still have to be fully convinced that my vote and and that the vote legitimately counts like that people are like it's counted and that and the whole electoral college thing um uh, it's not just a general election um when you get the electoral college involved and how that can sway uh, an election it just doesn't seem to add up um it just seems to be a, a system to keep people pacified like they are actually they actually have power which is is made up of nothing so that's that that is still unfortunately my take on voting i would love for it to matter and um i justify it by saying like i vote every day with dollars i vote every day with intention and um you know how i choose to pray or give energy or talk and i don't always like how i vote but i vote nonetheless that's how i justify it but as far as like political voting um maybe i i could definitely be convinced to vote locally and participate more locally uh and i think maybe as i if i as i get older um participating more in local things local initiatives local politics understanding who the candidates are and putting that person in a position to make decisions that seems more righteous or uh more effective than voting for a celeb you know our celebrity our representative basically uh, to the world now all that being said i i'm in wisconsin this is trump country there are trump signs everywhere i took friends on a boat um uh, one time uh, during the summer and it coincided with a trump rally on the lake massive amounts of boats were driving with trump flags honking their horns causing a ruckus we were like in our boat like in the middle like rocking and rolling like oh this is this is like such a metaphor for the discord that and i was with a bunch of like liberal leaning people and like and it seemed like a, a, a metaphor uh, and only propelled the distaste for Trump. But I, I'm in Trump country and I can see the appeal as a man who values freedom and a sense of freedom. Um, and I'm not saying this is what he gives, but this is the kind of the talk, the kind of talk that he uses just just take the masks for example like that language appeals to me putting a mask on does feel like a muzzle it does feel like an infringement on my um on my rights and my sense of freedom especially for a flu like virus that takes less people than any like abortion, uh, suicide, cars, uh, accidents, like it seems hyper politicized and that doesn't even seem like they're hiding it anymore. I'm not saying the virus isn't real. It, it could, it is a real virus. It does take people's lives. It does make people sick, 
but its origins, I still am unclear about. Like Trump will say, yes, this was made in a Wuhan lab, and there's evidence that supports that. Um, and that seems authentic. And like drain the swamp and like I'm different than a politician, that stuff has an appeal. It does have an appeal to me. Um, saying how Biden's had 50 years to make it, uh, make these differences and not, and he hasn't done so like that. There's an appeal there. All that being said, if I was to vote, I would still vote for Biden. And the reason is, is environmental deprivatizing prisons is a huge one. That's basic human rights. That's basic liberty, pursuit of happiness, life liberty, is pursuit of happiness. Decriminalizing cannabis, allowing people to have sovereignty. It's one step closer to people having sovereignty over their own consciousness. That's very important to me. A woman's right to choose seems important to me. It's 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 not important to me in terms of like I'm pro life or pro choice more one more than the other. It's just it is the leave that to women like that's a that the women need to decide that for themselves and it seems that the liberal side allows that choice to be given to women maybe again i still need to be convinced that all this matters and it's not all just a straw man thrown in our face to create a divide and to create more fear and and divisiveness um to get control I still have to be convinced of that. And then thirdly, maybe Kanye. Straight up. Listen to a Kanye podcast today with Joe Rogan, a portion of it. And he's crazy, like a f- like and all over the place. But he actually seems to be more anchored by exposing the crazy and like how his mind goes all over. I can actually like relate and he might be the best choice straight up and i actually can see him being in the office maybe not now but in the future maybe not 2020 but maybe i mean he's still pretty young and i can see it happening and maybe if the principles of love that he was talking about are able to transfer to a style of leadership it might create a positive ripple <laughs> so I can't like, so I might vote for Kanye is what I'm saying. Listen to the podcast and he's all over the board and he's definitely has worked with mental issues, but I have too. And it doesn't mean I shouldn't lead. It doesn't mean I should lead a country. I'll start by leading this podcast, but it's, I'm most worried about people who's, who hide their shadows so good that those are the scariest people to me. People who can show that they have a shadow side, can acknowledge it, can even talk about it. I'm more comfortable with those people because they have a level of self-awareness and they're not hiding. They're not tangling webs of lies and hiding stuff, which seems more scary to me.